I'm going to hand straight over to Helen Martin and her colleague Anne from Glasgow University. Apologies for the timing, but we're really looking forward to hearing your presentation. Okay, thanks very much. Hi, and as Kat says, um, I'm Helen Martin, um, and I, I teach in the Community Development Programme up at the University of Glasgow, and my colleague Anne McGreekin. So today, we're, uh, the next 10 minutes, you're going to hear our, our dulcet tones and our experience of the PST. Can I have next slide, please, if it's going to go... Um, so, as part of the undergrad um, uh, BA Honours in Community Development, every year our students spend um, 450 hours of community development practice in, in the field, um, and as part of that, that, that kind of getting to know and engage in the community, we use a different model each year. So, in first year students will be introduced to using um, uh, uh, the asset-based community development approach as a means of, of gathering information and, and analysis of the community in the context that they're working in. Year two, our students use the community capitals framework as, as that part of that engagement. And then in year three, our students are engaged in using the PST as a means of, of engagement and analysis and understanding of the context that they're working in. Next slide, please. Um, so we undertook, so we've been using it, probably using the PST with the students in third year for the last three years. Um, and in each year, is, uh, all programmes, we, we kind of review what we're doing and how we do that. Um, but um, Speaking to some other folk, we decided that, that a way forward and kind of gather um, some information about the use of the PST with the students is we undertook um, a research, a recent research project with a number of the, our graduates. We got ethical approval from the university. We engaged in a series of focus groups um, with our graduates, one-to-one -one interviews and semi-structured um, interviews with them as well in terms of gathering information. And what we were trying to draw out from their experience was what was what was the positives, what were some of the challenges, adaptions and actions um, that, that came out of their, their, their hours that they spent um, in the field um, using the PST. So the next couple of slides is going to kind of talk a wee bit about, about that. Um, and some of the challenges that, that the students faced um, whilst um, out in the community was that, and some of the things that they spoke about was that we have to be careful because sometimes it could be viewed, the PST in itself could be used as a kind of tick box exercise. Um, a bit of a numbers game, if you like. Numbers can become a bit meaningless if used in a really huge, large-scale um, engagement because when you put it together, it's the middle ground and you lose some of the, the minutia of, of some of those conversations. Um, and some of the students were saying that, that for them it, it, it felt like it could be used as just being another form of consultation. And that that's that the danger of that is when you don't go back and feed back to the people that have took the time um, to, to engage um, in the process with you. Um, and one of the other challenges was about around going to the usual suspects, you know, that, uh, you know, we have to be much more aware of, of trying to engage the wider community. Um, and I think we've heard some fantastic examples of how that, that's been really um, great and, and came for some really good results. Um, some of the other things that, that students were saying, that, or graduates were saying, it could be justification for, for resource spend. So it justifies why we're doing that and not that. Um, and and there, there needs to be a, a, a bit of a, a, a careful thinking around that. I suppose the implementation of the plan of the action plan, it's about being clear about it, your intention when you were using the PST, what is the purpose of the PST, um, and hoping that, that when actions um, arise, uh, that they actually are followed through. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that the graduates, when looking back, was about getting community buy-in. Um, and that this was going to be something that was going to be beneficial and that they themselves had a voice in. So they were some of the challenges that, that, that the students and others had faced when thinking about this. Um, but the other side of that was what were the things that were really positive and what were the things that they gained out of that. And, and for them, it was a bit, it, it, it's a fantastic tool for getting people talking. Um, and it identifies the assets in communities as well. So as well as, you know, some of the areas that, that needs some consideration, it identified the absolute treasures that were there in communities. Um, and that, that, that there's a feel-good factor in that. 
that the headers, the prompt questions were good um, introductions to, to discussions and it got people thinking more broadly about their community. When you look at those 14 areas, there's some aspects of that that you would have less, inf less um, information or knowledge around. So this encouraged much more deeper conversations and broader conversations. And as we've seen earlier, it can lead, when it's used well, can lead to really positive outcomes um, for, for, you know, the participants, the, the, the students and also for the community itself. Um, and it's also, I think, what's really important for us is that it holds others to account. So in that analysis, when you see there is a low score, that actually who are the stakeholders, the power brokers that have a responsibility for those particular areas, and it enables you know communities to to kind of ask questions um, of those people um, in that position. Um, next slide, please. And you're going to take over. Yeah, am I? Yeah, I'm unmuted. Okay, so we're just going to give two very quick examples of where the place standard tool was adapted. So this particular one, um, the student was on placement um, in a primary school in the East End of Glasgow. So it was an area that was seen, uh, an area of multiple deprivation. Uh, so she worked with primary school with seven children um, who, would, who would be seen as the disruptive children at risk of exclusion. So she had this group that she was working with. Um, at first, she started off using the, the booklet. She gave them that, thought that might be interesting for them to kind of look through and work on, but they just, no, nah, they weren't really interested. But she really wanted to do that, you know, she wanted to hear their voice and, and hear and understand what they thought of their community. So they started to go on, on walks. She took them outside the school and they, they walked about, which that wasn't without its challenges either. It was good. But um, as well as being at risk of exclusion for school, some of these young people were excluded from community spaces, you know, the, the shops and, you know, people would kind of look on them as if, you know, what you're doing here, you know, the troublemakers. Next step was she hired some bikes from the local bike project. So that, that meant that they could go wider, you know, than they cycled about the, you know, the wider area. And, and as well as they've done this over a number of weeks, so it really built relationship between the, the, the student and the young people. They began to notice different things about their community. They began to speak up about it. They noticed that as they went into the park, at one end of the community, there were some beautiful flowers and lights and all the rest of it. For their end of the community, there was a rusty gate and it was down an alley. They began to speak about things like that. This place was, uh, you know, there was litter here, but there was lots of bins at that end. They began to question and challenge. She invited the parents and carers in. Again, relationship was key there. It took some time to get to know the parents and for them to view her not as a tech teacher, not as a person of authority, but just as, you know, as somebody they could relate to. So coffee mornings and that kind of thing. And they, they then began to have their say on what they thought of their community. The, the final part, and, and, the, and this was at the, the prompt and the, the young people was inviting the school teachers to take part. And the diagram that you see in front of you was a kind of result, you know, the different colours were the different, you know, groups who were represented. The young people really took issue with the fact that the school teachers scored their, their community so low. They, and, the, and that led to a conversation, a dialogue, a meaningful conversation, which was really helpful. Um, so um, can we move on to the next one? Please, thank you. So the next group, um, that was a, a, a student who was working with a group of adults with additional support needs. Immediately, the booklet was unsuitable. So they, they, they sat down and they spoke about what would work and they redesigned it. They, they, they used this um, game. So using the, the image that is on the P PSC, but in game form. So they had dice and the dice, you know, certain numbers corresponded to areas on the, you know, headings on, on the tool. Um, and they, they didn't use numbers to score, but they had discussion around it. You know, um, they used chance cards and the chance cards were questions that would, you know, just kind of general questions about their community. So out of that, um, the student, you know, it picked up in three, it was where their passion was, what got them motivated, what were they really talking about? So these three key points and they, you know, took action in that. So we don't really have time to get into the, the three key points and what was done. 
but the students felt that their voice was sorry the the participants felt their voice was heard and she really emphasized look this is a unique piece of work you folk you know are real you know are, your voices have been heard this time and how you feel about it will never be replicated so there were three things that came out of that uh, that they took action on can we move on to the next slide please so all this, um, you know, as well as um, working with the students um, on the degree programme, we also work in communities in the Activate programme. And this is what we're going to, you know, we're going to be taking it further through that. So the Activate programme is an introduction to community development for local activists, people living and working in communities who've not had the formal education, the, the opportunity for that. So it kind of covers the key concepts and theories of community development, very participatory and um, community engagement and investigation is a part of that course. So I think that um, the driver for the Activate Plus, which is what we are kind of looking to use, where we're looking to use the PST, the driver for that was um, to develop a kind of deeper dive, a deeper understanding and the root causes of some of the inequalities um, that were, you know, that, that are present in our communities and finding ways to address these. So the, the PST, we felt, offered um, the opportunity for the participants to engage the wider community in these issues. So training and experience using the PST would be offered, meaning that the, the students, the participants in the course themselves, they would be the ones who would carry out the engagement. You know, So it wouldn't rely on the experts coming in, they would be the ones who would do it. The role of the tutor in this would just to be support to support them to help develop their engagement plan and to help them take forward the action plan and, and bringing the stakeholders into the room um, and finding a way to take action. So that's it. I've been a very brief uh, kind of overview of what we've done. Helen, can I just hand back to you for the final comment on that? Oh, Helen's leaving, sorry, um, she's had to go. So really, I think just, just the thing that we wanted to say was that the interconnectedness of the, the academic, the educational and the practical application of the, the tool um, is what we would be hoping to achieve. Um, and it enhances the students' learning, but it also gives voice to the community and allows them to, um, you, to be the ones who are hearing what's been said and taking action on it. So I'm just going to leave it there. Helen might have put it a bit more succinctly, but um, I think we're just slightly over time. Thanks. Thank you, Anne, and, and please pass on our thanks to Helen as well. I think you wrapped it up beautifully um, and it's really valuable for us to hear your academic and, and kind of evaluation perspective on it all. I